Indeed. I make girls cry. I'm David Klontz with David Klontz Personal Training. I'm here today with Coach Robert Bailey, Coach Bailey's Personal Training. Today we're doing a video on competition posing for bodybuilding for beginners. This video is to educate our clients and uh, anybody out there on YouTube that's new to bodybuilding and wants to try it out. In our video, I'm going to go over what I'm thinking when I'm up there on stage and Coach is going to go over what judges are looking for and what he's telling his clients to do when he's coaching them. First we're going to go over why posing is important. Posing is just as important as staying on the meal plan and working out hard every day to get ready to go on that stage. I've seen many competitions where people have the best body but they don't win because they didn't pose enough, they weren't conditioned enough, they're up there on stage shaking, they're searching for poses, so you got to get out there and you got to do the work so you can show off all the hard work you've already done. And the aspect of what judges are looking for, three things, they're looking for body symmetry, they're looking for muscularity, and they're looking for presentation. Now presentation is the posing and that's primarily what we're going to be showing you today. Symmetry, they want to make sure, basically a judge will divide you from top to bottom and across the middle. We want to make sure the top and bottom are congruent. Same thing left and right. They'll look at shoulder muscles, compare them to calf muscles. You don't want to go on stage with skinny legs and broad shoulders. You want that symmetry. But muscularity with the kind of bodybuilding we do, which is natural, is a different look. Uh, muscles aren't quite as big, but they are just as defined, just as cut. Remember, you're always presenting yourself on stage. You don't want to slump down in between poses. You don't want to over-relax in between one pose and another. You're always on display. You never rest when you're on that stage. You rest when you get off the stage. And you're always smiling. you got to make it look easy. And that comes with your conditioning and your practice. And when you walk on stage, Judge is going to take you through a couple of rounds. first one is symmetry, which will be a series of quarter turns so the judges can actually look at top to bottom, left to right, and muscle comparisons. Uh, then after that, you'll do the individual pose. You have different organizations, and there's several organizations that we compete in. Uh, judging criteria can be a little bit different, but primarily you'll have eight or nine basic poses. The order in which they're called may be different. You'll have six to eight judges with one head judge. They're observing you throughout this process, but they're also comparing you to eight or ten other uh, competitors as they go through the process. Before you go on stage, you want to pump up. I usually go about two or three groups before I'm supposed to hit on stage and start hitting a good pump. You want to have that feeling in your muscles where your skin feels like it's stretching and your arm's going to kind of explode. You don't want to over pump before you flatten out. You just want to get blood into your muscles. Um, generally, you want to pump up your upper body and not your lower body. Well, I have seen competitors who would actually do a complete workout backstage. Definitely don't want to do that. Yeah, don't want to wear yourself yeah. out. You're going to need that energy when you, you start showing yourself on stage. And you're also going to read all kinds of crazy things you need to eat before you go on stage. Really, you don't need to do anything super crazy. Maybe something a little sugary or something a little salty, but you don't need to eat a whole king-size bag of Skittles or something like that before you go on stage. A lot of ladies like wine to create some vascularity. A lot of them like too much wine. Uh, so you, have be, you have to be careful about that. Right. Well, let's get into some poses. Let's go. Right, a couple of things before we start. You have to practice posing. You know, a lot of people come on stage, no practice. Halfway through, they're ready to just fall out. Uh, you'll see as David goes through this, it will take a lot out of you <laughs> to, to demonstrate the poses. The other thing is that for men, women, bodybuilders, the posing is the same. You'll have a head judge who will make the calls, and sometimes he'll make different calls for uh, females than, than for males, but uh, as far as learning your poses, females have to do the same thing the guys do. Now, what I'm going to do first is take data through a series of quarter turns where the judges are looking at his symmetry. Again, you take an invisible line and divide it here. We want to make sure the right thigh is not overdeveloped as opposed to the left thigh. Uh, pecs look the same. But we also divide him here. Uh, a lot of guys have trouble developing 
legs because they don't want to do the work it takes to develop the legs. But you want to make sure legs match the upper body. Remember that as soon as you're on the stage, you're being judged. So you're, <laughs> you can't relax. You have to be imposing mentality the first step on the stage. You're selling yourself to these judges. All right, so we have what's called a relaxed pose. Obviously, this is not relaxed. Uh, you know, make your face a little relaxed as best you can, but uh, it's not a hard pose, but you know, you're, you're demonstrating what you have worked so hard to accomplish. Uh, so judges will take a few minutes to look at David from the front, and then the head judge is making these calls, so he'll call a quarter turn to your right. Now, every pose, you always build from the feet. You'll notice as David turned, first thing he did was to set his feet. Um, on all these, you want to take a deep breath. You want to make the chest as big as you can make it. Uh, you want to make sure you're using right side of the body to, to bring tightness across the chest here. You want to make sure your abs are tight. You don't want a belly sticking out. All right, and then quarter turn to your right. Now what the judges are looking for here is that V taper, rounded shoulders. See this muscle versus this muscle, they look alike. He's not overdeveloped. You see muscle here, got the same ones over there. He's not overdeveloped on one side. Quarter turn to your right. Now, the thing to keep in mind, you have six to eight judges, and usually they'll sit a seat apart, so they're spread out. And you have to make sure that the judge over here and over here can see, more so when we do the individual poses, because here you want to hold this pose uh, as they observe your symmetry. We will talk more about how you meet the eye of the judges on the corner. Right, and then quarter turn to your right. They'll take a final, final look at you. you remember that there's 10 other contestants perhaps on stage, and you're being compared to those other 10. Conditioning is a, a vital part to what we're doing here. All right, what I'm thinking when I hit a front pose, that's how we're going to do this video, is I'm going to go over what me as the competitor is thinking, my whole thought process through the pose to make sure I get everything that I'm supposed to do. Uh, first, setting my feet. You can play around this with this uh, when you're posing by yourself, figure out what works best for you. Me, it's my legs slightly about 45 degrees out. I'm driving my weight towards my knees. That's going to keep quads and my upper quads flexed. Set my feet, flex my legs, flare my lats, and hit that pose. You don't want to keep searching for it after you hit it. Now you'll notice that David's feet are slightly turned out. What that does is create a sweep here as well as uh, the slight squat. It creates a bigger sweep on his uh, thigh here. Alright, when I hit the quarter turn, there's a couple different ways to do this from the one I prefer. I put my heel in the arch of my foot. I straighten out this leg and flex this butt cheek. You're driving your other leg into your hamstring. That's going to make your leg look even wider, and it's going to show a little more definition in there. I like to go ahead and get wide, and then turn into it, staying wide. And then you're bringing this arm across, just like Coach was saying earlier, and showing a little definition in your chest. You can come across here, come across here, right here, whatever looks best with you. You find it, and you use it when you get on stage. The head. Most organizations want you looking straight ahead rather than looking at the judges on this pose. Then when I turn to the back, same thing on the front. I have my toes pointed out about 45 degrees. I am pulling my weight towards my heels. And when I do that, that tightens up my hamstrings and my butt. So that's the first thing I do is I plant my feet, pull towards my butt, that gets everything tight back here. And then a flare the lats. A flare in the little lats. A common mistake some guys make is they go way too high. Uh, you 
can see it gives it more, more depth. The elbows are in a comfortable position as opposed to too high. The other thing is sometimes guys are too low. They bring their hands around that front. Uh, it's hard when you practice to see yourself in the mirror. Uh, but you can do it. You can set up a mirror here and you can see what gives me the most out of my V taper. All right, the calls from the head judge uh, can be pretty random, but he'll usually follow a pattern as he has you make your quarter turns. So generally the first call will be a front double bicep. And I'll talk a little bit about common errors that people make. One is being too wide, another is being too close. So with your with your fist here, if you could extend your fingers, you'd be right at the edge of your head there. And that's about the distance. You want to make sure that you have equal distance between the fist and the head. You don't want one arm over here and one there. So that's why you practice in front of the mirror. Here to here should be somewhat parallel to the floor. Uh, the idea is to create as large a cap as you can. Uh, in the wintertime on David, you can actually see snow up here on that, on that cap. Uh, we're looking for the caps there, we're looking for shoulder development here, uh, we're looking for again the V taper, we're looking for uh, those rib muscles there. It's not an ab pose, so you're not crunching down. If you crunch too far down, you're going to take away from the, the spread of your set. Ab pose will come later, but if your abs are developed, they'll, they'll show here. Now David does a step to the outside, uh, you can, and on his toe, you can in fact go with your heel out front, but that's when you practice, you find out what looks best for you. So basically when I'm hitting the pose, I plant my plant leg, just like I'm doing in a front pose, driving out to the knee, put my weight on my toe here. I get leaning up, I'll see my rope coming in. Not quite there yet. Then reach up, you bring it down past where you want to finish, and then bring it up to where you want to finish. And I'm making sure I got my chest up. I'm not shrugging up, but my rib cage is coming up. Kind of like you're bowing up with somebody. And then I'm making sure my bicep it's just above my shoulder and I personally like to feel like my hands are kind of pulling up my biceps that way I don't get too far in or too far out like coaches say. And one other thing to keep in mind, judges are seated in the audience stages usually elevated four feet at least. You want to be careful not to bend too far away from the judges. Yeah anytime you lean back you're going to lose your width when you lean back. It's just going to make you look more narrow. So I even lean just slightly towards the judges, like you're towering over them. The second front call is uh, a front lat spread. Again, remember you're always building from the feet up. Now here, you want your, you know, David's hands are parallel to the floor. They're not down here, they're not up here. Uh, and little things are important with imposing. Notice how he's using his hands to give him an even greater V taper. Uh, he's narrowing his waist a couple of inches just by the placement of his hands. Uh, your elbows are slightly far, not too far. Lock your thumbs here. Well, you want to really lift the upper quadrant of your your chest here. Again, you want to look as full as you can, because you want to make sure the judges can see the lats here from the front. All right. Same thing as before. Just like doing a front pose, I keep my feet in the same place, pushing out towards your knees. I reach out to them. I get as narrow as I can when I pull it back and then present them nice and well. You want to just roll it forward, elbow slightly forward just like Coach was saying, chest up, don't lean too far back.
stay upright. Smile. Keeping symmetry in mind throughout. You, know, you don't want to overpose one arm as opposed to the other. Don't search for it up on stage. Hit it with confidence. One other front pose is ab. Quite often they'll call, they'll call ab with your best thigh. So you get to display the thigh. You gotta know which one it is <laughs> before you get on stage. <clears throat> it always helps and know the best way to display it. I've actually displayed mine a couple different ways through the years. Um, for a while there, I was doing a heel, showing it like that. And for another few shows, I was on my toe. It's just whatever you think displays you the best. We'll do the heel for today. As David mentioned earlier, later on he'll develop a, a sartorius, that long muscle that runs from groin to knee. And where you place that foot may affect how that muscle is displayed. I'll let David tell you how he goes about setting this up. Notice his elbows are tight, they're, they're not out here. You will take a deep breath, breathe out just a little bit, and then squeeze down. Again, you have judges here, you have judges there, so you can turn your body to make sure the judges are seeing not only the six pack, but you know, everything on the either side. From the floor up again, set your foot, display your favorite quad, reaching up high, you cup your ears, elbows in, blow it out. And this is one you got to play with. Some people look a little better coming a little further down. Some people look best keeping them stretched out and just posing from right here. So you got to practice at home. It's a reoccurring thing that you got to practice. Your hand placed it behind your head. How do you? I cut one over the other about like this. And just pull behind my head. The head judge will take you through your quarter turns and he'll call out different poses. When you are facing the opposite direction that he's facing now, you have the same two poses we're about to show you, which is a side chest and a tricep pose. So we won't go over both sides. It's the same pose, just you're posing the opposite side to the judge. Again, remember, judges here to there, they're spread out, and you want to see what you're posing. We call this a side chest pose, but you're showing bicep, you're showing shoulder, of course, legs. Uh, you're posing your entire body with every pose. All right, here David, as he was saying a while ago, some poses where he'll squat a little more to get more out of his side. So building from the floor, uh, his toe of his front foot uh, is in the instep of his back foot. He's using the thigh of the back leg to push against his posing leg, you can see what it, what it creates here. It's a, a much more depth than the, the hamstrings. He's using his bicep here to bring that tech muscle over. You can see the, the striation that's developed there by doing that. So it's a tight squeeze and a pull, a little bit of dipping, but you don't want to dip too far. You don't want to pull too far over with the right shoulder. Find what's comfortable to you. Now the other thing we're looking at is shoulder here, uh, traps, bicep, forearm even. Uh, David uses a top hand, bottom hand grip. Uh, sometimes we'll see a wrist grip. Sometimes we'll even see a, an angled grip on the, the wrist. What you want to do is you practice to find out which one gives you the greatest head on that bicep. All right, what I'm thinking about on the side chest, planting the toes and the arch of my back foot. Back foot stays flat on the floor. Squat down till you feel your hamstring engage. You're always keeping your toes spiked. That way you're showing off your calf. I like to give a little, little tricep before. You don't want to overdo it with your lead ins, but a little lead ins kind of nice. Especially if you really like how your triceps look. Go ahead and show it off when you can. So, I'll hit here, flex my tricep, bring my hands together, and pull it across right there. Now, one thing you want to do is you don't want too much gap in between this arm and your chest, because you want to be 
be able to push that chest over. And you're going to be greased up and slick, which makes it hard. So it's really important to really drive it in there and keep it tight. So flex, pull it over. I'll lean just slightly to the judges. Like I was saying earlier, I try not to overdo it. When you want to stay wide, keep your chest up. A lot of people that want to collapse their shoulders when they're flexing your chest, you're not flexing this side at all. It's just this side. This side's stretching, this side is flexing. If you flex both sides, you lose all your width. So show a big muscle right here, show a hard muscle right here. Now another thing to keep in mind is timing of setting your pose. You don't want to do it too quickly, but you don't want to drag it out. But you'll notice, if you look right here on David's chest, he has a huge indention that looks good when I mean, he pops it in there. So he wants to go slow enough so the judges can see that happen, yeah. but not where he focuses on that and he stays in this position when the judges are moving on to the next pose. Exactly. But, but use any, anything you have to your advantage, show it, display it. And going back to the other thing, when he sets his tribe, notice what happens here as well. Uh, all these muscles are engaged. The judges will pick up on that rather easily. All right, next call is side tricep call. So now we're looking here to here primarily, but again, we're building from the bottom up. And we're posing every muscle in our body. But the judges want to compare your hard work on the try versus everybody else that's on stage. A couple of things you'll look for is what they call the horseshoe. Tricep being three muscles. You got here, a big one in the back, and then a flat one under. When those are flexed, you have a little horseshoe sticking out there. The other thing judges will look for here is the development of the shoulder. You see David has, even this early on, he has a striations of muscles that are that are hanging down. Another thing we haven't mentioned is vascularity. Vascularity is the vein showing will show leanness on the part of the, the poser. So we you see David has little veins popping out here even this early on. And he isn't fully leaned out yet. Third muscle they'll look at is this trap muscle here sitting off his uh, his neck. Now this is one where really you have to work hard for this judge to see. This judge can easily see. So a little little turn for this judge to, to pick up on that. But that's the reason they do the same pose in both directions, so the judge can see that. Now Dave is going to demonstrate a, a, a lead into this pose where he's going to let the judges see a lot of things other than just the tricep as he gets into his pose. But notice the back development as he advances to the final pose right there and then he pops it. So the judges like that individuality. You know, they can show him personality uh, when he's showing all those muscles. Yeah. Yeah. But some of you got to practice at home because you can turn something that shows something off into something that just makes you look silly if you get up there and get wobbly and fumble around try to hit that and then you're losing your balance or something, because you're going to be tired. So you got to practice. Basic things I'm doing when I'm hitting the pose, the same thing on the feet. This foot flat, toes in the arch, squat down, pushing the thigh into the hamstring. This one, I like to roll back and present it. That's a, like I was just saying, just little things that make it look nice, pleasing to the eye. I'll hit the hands, and then roll that shoulder back. One main thing I have problems with the clients is they'll slump down and relax, stomach will poke out. You need your chest up, all these poses, chest up, not shoulders up, rib cage up. So chest up high, that'll stretch out your stomach, and then twist just a little bit so you Get some width at the top, but your belly button's still pointing this way, so you're narrow at the waist. And one other thing, people get a little over-obsessed with abs, 
and every pose they try to show their abs and it throws off what they're actually trying to yeah. do. So in this one, as they just saying, chest high, it'll flatten your abs out. If the abs are there, they're there. Yeah, if you, if you crunch your abs, you lose the pose. So, so don't, don't be don't over do obsessed with those things. You, you get to show your abs off, don't worry about it. All right, the judge then will take you to another quarter turn, which will put your back to the judges. Uh, you'll turn and you'll be in your relaxed pose, which again is not relaxed at all, as you can see. You're going to do two upper body poses here. But the first one will be the rear lat spread. Again, notice he's building from the bottom. Uh, his angle of his feet or get showing sweep on his thigh. But now the judges can see calf muscles, so you want to make sure calf muscles are being illustrated as well. Again, different from the front lat spread in that David is trying to get as wide as he can. You still have the V tapered, but that's not necessarily the focus. It's trying to get your back as wide. Uh, again, the judges are down here, so you want a little bit of lean toward the judges. You don't want to be forward here and where they can't see. Uh, again, they're looking for symmetry. They're looking at these muscles here. As you can see on David, they're uh, pretty symmetrical, actually. Is that a surprise? Man. Uh, did I say it that way? <laughs> I didn't mean to say it that way. Now, notice again, he's bringing in the thumbs here to create more of a V taper. So little things that give you width at the top and narrowness at the bottom. All right, when I'm thinking when I hit it, you got your plant leg, set that, spike the calf. You got to make sure that calf's on the display the whole time. And you want to practice it with uh, each leg spiked. Because sometimes in a few competitions, they'll tell you to spike the other calf from what you do in a rear double bicep. Just depends on the organization. I like to do both, just so one leg can have a rest. So, spike the calf. Remember, your back side is what's showing, so everything is flexed on the back. Hamstrings, butt, calves, everything. All right, on the last spread, same thing as in front. Reach out, pinch it together. You want to show all that muscle in your back as you do this row. And then wear them out. Try not to hunch up too much or even arch back too much. Just you're leaning towards the judges slightly, but stay as upright as you can because you start losing a little bit of width the more you you'll show a lot of lat, but you lose your width. So somewhere in the middle. And you're not flexing your lats, you're spreading your lats. That's a problem a lot of people have with it. So I want to come right here and flex your lats and never actually spread them. Also, make sure you're not shrugging when you do this as well. Just keep your shoulders relaxed, flare them out. Don't make it harder than it really needs to be. And this pose is probably the most difficult for someone who's just getting into bodybuilding and posing. The key is getting that scapula bone, there's a pocket for it, to get it to fall right in that pocket. And some people will have these chicken wing looking things that stick out. But you've got to learn to get that scapula bone in its right slot. As soon as you do that, then it spreads the back out. All right. The next upper body pose with the back to the judges is a rear double bicep. Uh, pretty much except for the foot placement, the same as front double bicep, but as you can well see, I'm showing a whole different array of muscles. Judges want to look for, again, that peak, but they also want to see uh, the front part of your delt. If it can show from the rear, then we know you have excellent uh, delt development. Uh, trap here. Uh, you want some taper, it obviously won't be as wide as uh, your lat spread, but you still want to have that that V-taper. Actually, when, when David's leaned out from, from his trunks to his top, you see muscle development, you see a lot of muscle development now. Same thing as the rear lat spread. Plant the foot, display the calf. I like to reach up high, 
you're showing off all this muscle as you're flexing down, just like you're doing a lat pull down. Hands, show that muscle, just like the front double bicep, you come a little bit past where you want to go, and then pop it up. And if you have great back development like David, again, take a little bit of time in setting that thing, because when you reach up here and you come down, the judges can see all that back development that you work so hard for. But it's all about timing. Again, you don't want to stay up here forever because you have good muscles when you do that. You know, there's two poses on the legs from the rear as well. Uh, first thing we'll do is a hamstring pose. I notice, well David will take you through it, but the angle of his foot changes a little bit so that the judges can see it. Uh, you've got a couple options with your foot, uh, flexing it or, or extending it. Again, find out which one works best for your display of the hamstring. Good opportunity to show calves as well. Don't forget your upper body. You're still posing your upper body. So somewhat of a, a lat spread is going on at the same time. Now this one involves a lot of balance. Judges don't mind at all if you shift one foot to the other, plus you're showing all the judges and you're showing symmetry of both legs. On this one and the calf pose are the only ones that I start from the top up, I mean the top down. All the other poses you're setting your feet and working your way up. I like to flare my lats and get that set. Then I put my weight on my foot and do the curl in to show up the hamstrings. That way I'm making sure I'm staying wide while I'm showing off the hamstring. And you're just flexing it just like you're doing a leg curl. Right there. You have a series of muscles we call the hamstring, but a series of muscles, but what you're looking for is that separation right there. Some width here, but then you got the bigger muscle right here and then the sweep on the outside. So judges will pick up on several of those, the separation of the muscle, I should say. Calf development, um, I've seen shows where judges totally ignored calf development. They felt like they saw it in other, other poses. But here, with the calves, you want to see separation of the two big muscles in the calf. They get that separation with the big muscle here and then the one on the outside. Also, this muscle here that connects everything up to the knee. Sometimes you're tired, you're a little wobbly. Judges are fine if you go up and you come back down. Show both calf muscles and that they're looking for symmetry, that one leg is not more developed than the other. And basically on this one, I do upper body first, and then just raise up on your calves. If you want to play around with it, some people toes out, shows their calves better. Some people toes just straight forward, some people toes in. Probably need a buddy, either taking pictures or looking in the mirror behind you, see which one works best for you. For me personally, it's the toes in. All right, judges then we call a quarter turn to the right. They're going to take you through both the side chest pose and the tricep pose. Uh, it's the same when you face the other way, it's just to give the judges on the the other side a chance to see and to look at symmetry, make sure you're not more developed on one side than the other. Alright, then we'll do a, a quarter turn to the right. There's a couple of final poses. Often I don't see this one with women, but I, I probably have seen it one time over 12 years, and that's the serratus pose. Uh, it's side angle of the abs, those muscles that support the abs. So you can see those long muscles there, and that's, that's what they're looking for, development of that. The series of muscles that are right there on, on your rib cage as well. So you get three, four popped out there, and then the rate is coming down. And as David leans out even more, you'll see uh, the obliques popping out. And if they allow time, you can switch one side to the other, again, showing the different judges. Same foot position as the side pose, toes, in the arch of your foot, flexing that hamstring. Just like on the ab pose, you cup it nice and tight. 
you're reaching up tall, you can put this hand on your hip and you can exhale out. And that brings everything out. When I hit it, I'll do it like this. And I like to show a little bicep. Again, personality. Confidence. Yeah. All right, now, usually the final pose will be the, the most muscular pose. And the judges may call this most muscular. Sometimes they'll call most muscular crab. Sometimes they'll call most muscular hands on the hips. Um, so listen to the call. Uh, but with the men, most often it's the crab pose. So let's look at that one first. Most muscular crab pose. There's several things they're looking for here. They're looking for trap development. Notice on David's chest, the striation coming across, bicep development, uh, front end of the delts are showing, setting the legs. And notice his legs on this one's a little different in that he's a little more narrow than he is on some of the other poses. Uh, still creating that sweep on the thighs. Basically on this one, you got to find what looks best for you. Some people it's been up over a little more and showing more trap. Some people standing up a little higher, showing more chest. So you just gotta play around with it. And same thing from the floor to the top. I'll set this leg, point out at 45. Set this leg, point out at 45. Get wide and really try to show everything off as you come down. So just squeeze it in right there. Some people's hands look better right here. Some people look better right here. So I'll play around with it, finding out what works best for you. And this pose doesn't have to be set once you hit it. I mean, you can actually yeah, pump. You can, you can roll around. You can do all that good stuff. When they call it a most muscular, they can call it just most muscular. And you got the freedom to do either one. And with the hands on the hip, it's less about the traps, maybe more about the chest. Uh, but you still get the shoulder, you still get the traps to show. This was actually a lot easier to hit than the crab pose, <laughs> so I like it a lot. Another variation of that for women is a combination of crab and one hand on the hip and the other into a crab pose. So you get the best of both worlds, maybe. So this one is just same thing, from the floor, make sure your legs stay flexed, make sure your upper, upper thigh stays flexed, hands on the hip, tighten everything up. Trying to stay as wide as you can, you don't want to curl up. So just flex, staying wide. And you can see as you go through this how important conditioning is. Uh, I've seen athletes actually pass out on stage. Uh, <laughs> Just run out of juice yeah. and fall out. I've seen judges have to call a timeout, let everybody go off and get water and come back. So it's very demanding. And you make a big mistake if you don't practice. Practice, practice. All right, so in conclusion, as Coach was saying right at the end, uh, practice is the most important thing in your posing. You want to hit all these poses. You want to keep track of what poses you look best in. Those are the ones you want to put into your routine. A lot of shows handle routines different. Um, if you do an NPC show, a lot of the times so they'll give you house music for 45 seconds to a minute, and you just hit your best poses during that by yourself on the stage. Other shows, you bring your own music, and you have a whole routine to it. Mostly it's for show, but sometimes they're doing a little judging, especially uh, if they haven't figured it out yet. But you want to know exactly what your best poses are for your routine, but also for once you win, you got to get in the pose down to get that pro card. So when you get out on stage, you want to know exactly what you look best in. And if anybody's hitting that pose, you got to hit it right next to them. You got to take command of the show. And the coach has got a good story about one of his clients that got in the pose down. And when everybody thought that she had got shown up, she turned it on to tell them that story. Uh, her competition was noted for doing splits on stage. She would go into a full split with a, a front double bicep. 
Uh, in her individual routine, she did that. I'm backstage with Melanie Coleman, and I asked her if she can do a split. She says, no, I haven't done one of those since high school. So as it turns out, Melanie wins her class, the other girl wins her class. So now they're in a pose down, uh, and that girl wants to show Melanie up, so she goes to the front of the stage and, and does a front double bicep with a split. Melanie walks in front of her. Steps right, right over. And so she actually did. And Melanie goes immediately and does the double bicep. The audience went nuts. Is there a so a little bit of adrenaline, but a lot of confidence. She stepped up and she won, her pro won her pro card by doing that. And that probably was the ultimate difference. I hope you all learned a lot from this video. Um, if you got future questions or thinking about doing a show, looking for a trainer, you can hit up Coach Bailey. I got his info right here. You could uh, give him a call or send him an email. Uh, or you can give me a call, send me an email, David Fonts Personal Training. Uh, we'll be glad to get you out on stage and uh, getting in the best shape of your life. I might mention, being a competitor is likely to be the hardest thing you've ever done, but at the same time, the most rewarding thing you've ever done. You'll be as fit as you've ever been, probably more fit than you've ever been, and your physique will be as best it can be. Hope you liked our video. Subscribe to Coach. We got his link on here. Subscribe to me. Later. You remember I had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I make girls cry.